وشرح به الصدور وفتح به أعينا عميا وآذانا صما وقلوبا غلفا فاللهم اجزه خير ما جزيت نبيا عن أمته ورسولا عن دعوته ورسالته وصل اللهم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وعلى جميع من استنى بسنته واقتفى بأثره إلى يوم الدين أما بعد All praise is due to Allah alone In him we seek aid and assistance and to him we turn both in repentance and for forgiveness Truly he whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides none can mislead and he whom Allah leaves to go astray there is none who can guide and I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship save Allah alone and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is both his slave and his messenger. Ya ayu alladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. O you who believe, have a taqwa, have a consciousness of Allah that is due to him and do not die except in a state of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to us in his book so many pearls of wisdom that the Prophet ﷺ, when he would be speaking to his companions, he would often pause and recite to them verses from the Qur'an related to whatever subject they were speaking about. And through this, the Prophet ﷺ was churning the hearts of the believers towards the Book of Allah and reminding them of the wisdoms that are within the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented us with a variety of stories, with a variety of wisdoms of people who preceded us, stories of those who came before us, stories of wisdom and of admonishment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose in the Qur'an which amongst the stories and the wisdoms that occurred before the revelation of the Qur'an would be included. Which of the prophets would be named in the Qur'an? Which of their stories would be recorded? And amongst the beautiful stories and pieces of wisdom and advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records in the Qur'an is the advice of Luqman alayhi salam and that which he speaks to his son. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ أَنَشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed we bestowed wisdom upon Luqman. And that he said, be grateful to Allah. And whoever is grateful, then indeed they are grateful for themselves. And whoever denies the favor of Allah, then indeed Allah is ghani, he is without need, and he is hamid, he is the one full of praise. The scholars differed over the status of Luqman alayhi salam, whether he was indeed a prophet or not. And most of the scholars in Islam state that he was not a prophet, but rather he was a man of wisdom, a leader amongst his people, and someone whom Allah azza wa jal blessed with words of wisdom and admonishment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose his story, and even if you were not a prophet, he chose him over many of the other prophets to be named in the Qur'an. And he chose his story to be the one told. And he named a chapter, has us with a chapter that is named after Luqman salam, Because of the tremendous wisdom that he had and that he imparted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَمَا يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةِ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا That whoever has been bestowed with wisdom, then indeed they have been given a tremendous amount of good. And for this reason, every believer should constantly strive and struggle to attain wisdom. And wisdom is attained through seeking knowledge. And through the memorization of the Qur'an and by having a relationship with the Book of Allah. And it is through intensive thought and thinking. And it is by removing oneself from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al-Shafi'i said in his famous words of poetry, شَكَوْتُ إِلَى وَكِيعْ سُوءَ حِفْذِي فَأَرْشَدَنِي بِتَرْكِ الْمَعَاصِي وَأَخْبَرَنِي بِأَنَّ الْعِلْمَ نُورُ وَنُورُ اللَّهِ لَا يُؤْتَى لِعَاصِي He said, I complained to Wakiya, his teacher, about my lack 
of memorization, my lack of accumulation of knowledge. So he instructed me or guided me to abandoning sins. And he informed me that knowledge is a light of Allah. And the light of Allah is not given to the one who is disobedient. And so as you abandon sins and you increase in your ibadah, in your devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will grant you perspective. Allah will grant you wisdom. Allah will grant you understanding. And, Allah, and through the soft heart that you attain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow the people to love this person and will allow them to gain from his wisdom. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ أَنِشْكُرُ لِلَّهِ That indeed we gave Luqman wisdom. And Allah begins by telling you that we have given him wisdom. For what reason? For you to value everything else that he will say. Before he even speaks in the Qur'an, Allah tells you we have given Luqman wisdom. So that you know what he will say is words of wisdom. And the first word of wisdom that he says, and indeed the pinnacle of all wisdom, have shukr of Allah. Be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is imperative for the believer to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over every blessing that we have wisdom or that we have witnessed. And indeed, this is the path of the prophets. And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, and he speaks about he and his Father and his grandfather abandoned idolatry. They abandoned shirk and they worshipped Allah alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Yusuf saying, He said, this is from the bounty of Allah over us and upon the people, but most of the people are not grateful. And when he mentioned Nuh alayhi salam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, he was a grateful slave. And when Ibrahim alayhi salam is described by Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shakiran li an'umi. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he was someone grateful for all of the favors. And Allah chose him and guided him to a straight path. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Dawood with many forms of blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, اِعْمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُودَ شُكْرًا وَقَالِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Work, O family of Dawood, in gratitude, in shukr, and indeed few of my servants are grateful. And when Allah mentions Sulaiman alayhi salam, throughout the story of Sulaiman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly mentions him being grateful to Allah azza wa jal. A story that is all about blessings and power and gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are so numerous and they are equaled with the act of gratitude that comes from Sulaiman alayhi salam. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ عِلْمًا وَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي فَضَّلَنَا عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِّنْ عِبَادِهِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we certainly gave knowledge to Dawood and Sulaiman and what did they say? They said, praise to Allah, who has favored us over most of the believers. So when he remembered his knowledge, he thanked Allah. And when he heard the ant speaking, he thanked Allah. And when Bilqis came to him, the queen, with all of her power and might, came to him, surrendering, he thanked Allah. And when he saw her throne, that people will fight wars over, and he saw it firmly established next to him. He thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتُ عَلَيْهِ That he said, Oh Allah, grant me, enable me with the ability to thank you for all of the blessings that you have given me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that when he acknowledges the armies and the power that Allah gave him, the armies surrounding him from men and jinn and the birds, and they are all marching in rows. And Sulaiman looks at this blessing and he says, He says, This is from the blessings of my Lord to test me. Will I be grateful or will I deny? And so the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the approach of all the prophets. And just as our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would worship Allah in the day and the night until his feet would crack 
and his feet would bleed. And Aisha would say to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, Alam yughfar lak ma taqaddama min dhambika wa ma ta'akhar. O Messenger of Allah, haven't you already been forgiven for what has preceded and what will come forth? Meaning she is saying, Ya Rasulullah, why are you tiring yourself? Why are you exhausting yourself? If you are seeking Jannah, has not Jannah already been confirmed for you? If you are fleeing from Jahannam, have you not already been guaranteed protection from it? And he said to her, قَالَ يَا عَائِشَةَ أَفَلَا أَكُونَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا O oh, Aisha, should I not be a servant who is grateful to Allah? And so here Allah informed all of us, be grateful to Allah. We have given Luqman wisdom in the first of the wisdom, the pinnacle of the wisdom, be grateful to Allah. If Allah has given you wealth, you need to be grateful to Allah. If Allah has given you health, you need to be grateful to Allah. If Allah has given you tawheed and saved you from shirk, you need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah has hidden your sins, you need to be grateful to Allah azza wa jal. If Allah has given you the ability to worship Him and to obey Him and prevented you from so much others, prevented you from so many other evil deeds that you could have done, then you need to be grateful to Allah over this blessing. If Allah has given you the ability to pray Salat al-Fajr, and so many others have been prevented due to their sins, due to the weakness of their iman, then you need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you see your children, and they are upon good, and they are devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they are honoring you, and helping you, and aiding you, then you need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu how great were the righteous people and the prophets and yet when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the prophets he didn't speak so much about their prayer or their taqwa in the Quran no he spoke about their gratitude to Allah azza wa jal their gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they're thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the poet says إِذَا كُنْتَ فِي نِعْمَةٍ فَرْعَاهَا فَإِنَّ الْمَعَاصِي تُزِيلُ النِّعْمِ he said if you are in blessing then you need to take care of it if Allah has given you blessing, you need to take care of it. For indeed, our sins are what will remove our blessings. And our neglect of the blessings of Allah and being grateful to Allah will cause those blessings to go away. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنَشْكُرُ لِلَّهِ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرُ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ and, and he continues and he says be grateful to Allah and when whoever is grateful then indeed you are only grateful for your own self. And it is incredibly imperative and important for every believer to understand that when you are grateful to Allah we do not increase the kingdom of Allah at all. When you are grateful to Allah, the one who is benefited by that gratefulness is you yourself. And in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, narrated by Abu Dharr, the hadith Qudsi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi, لو أن, لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على قلبي أتقى رجل, رجل منكم ما زاد في ملكي شيئا. يا عبادي لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أفجر قلب رجل منكم ما نقص من ملكي شيئا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says oh my servants if the first of you and the last of you mankind and the jinn all of you had the heart of the person with the most taqwa meaning if all of us had the heart of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam مَا زَادَ مِنْ مُلْكِي, ش... من ملكي شيئا. This would not increase my kingdom at all. And if all of you had the heart of the one who is most sinful in the sight of Allah, if all of us had the heart of Iblis, مَا نَقَصَ مِنْ ملكي شيئا. This does not decrease in my kingdom at all. يَا عِبَادِي إِنَّمَا هِيَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ أُحْصِيهَا لَكُمْ ثُمَّ أُوَفِّيهَا إِيَّاهَا فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ الله. He says, Oh my servants, it is your deeds that matter. It is your deeds that will be gathered. And then they will be given to you. And then you will get the reward of those deeds. 
فَمَنْ وَجِدَ خَيْرًا So whoever sees their deeds as being good, what should they do? فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ Let them be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ وَجِدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَ And whoever finds their deeds to be other than good, then let them not blame other than themselves. And وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ Whoever is grateful, they're only grateful to themselves. They're only grateful for their own sake. You are the one who will benefit from your gratefulness. And it's mentioned in Tafsir ibn Kathir, a riwaya, that Dawood alayhi salam said to Allah, Ya Rabb, كَيْفَ أَشْكُرُكْ وَشُكْرِي لَكَ نِعْمَةً تَسْتَحِقَ الشُّكْرِ He says, Oh Allah, how can I be grateful to you when my gratitude to you is something I need to be grateful to? Meaning when I say Alhamdulillah, that is a blessing. And I need to be thankful for saying Alhamdulillah. He said, Ya Dawood, يا داود الآن شكرتني he said oh داود now you have been grateful to me meaning when you realize that you can never be truly fully completely in gratitude to Allah when you recognize your shortcomings and being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the pinnacle of shukr is to know and to recognize no matter how much shukr you can have to Allah you will always be lacking and when you realize this and you realize that your gratitude is what protects you. Your gratitude of Allah is what guards you. It is what raises you. It is what purifies you. And that Allah is not in need of your shukr. Allah is not in need of your gratitude. This is when, and that you will never be able to be completely grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that you never stop trying. This is the pinnacle of shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ Whoever is grateful, they're only grateful for their own sakes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and He says, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ That to mention when Luqman said to his son while he is admonishing him. He tells him, يَا بُنَيْ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ The greatest advice the most sincere advice or admonishment that anyone can give is the admon admonishment of the parent for the child. All of us, if you have a friend or a colleague or someone who became successful, they got a tremendous amount of money, they got a promotion, even if you feel good for them, they're your friend, they are your neighbor, you like them, you feel good for them. There's still a part of you that wishes that you were the one who was successful and not them. But it's only the parent who truly, deeply desires for their child to be better than them. For their child to be more righteous than them. For their child to be more knowledgeable than them. For their child to be more blessed than them. It is only the parent that desires this sincerely for the child and no one else. So the advice of Luqman for his child and Allah telling you indeed Luqman is admonishing his son. Remember when Luqman admonished his son to remind all of you that you need to be admonishing your children. And for every child to realize that the admonishment and the advice you get from your parent is the only advice that you are going to get that is pure and sincere to you in this world. And what's also important is that as a community we have neglected the idea of admonishing each other. That remember when he was admonishing his son, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعِذْهُمْ And admonish them, admonish the believers. وَقُلْ لَهُمْ قَوْلًا بَلِيغًا And tell them a word that will reach deeply inside of them. This notion of giving other people advice, of giving them admonishment, of speaking to them with sincerity, is something that's escaping our community. You give someone advice, they get upset. How dare you give me advice? How dare you tell me something that will benefit me? How dare you give, get, put yourself in this situation and give me advice? A man went to Imam Abu Hanifa. He said to him, He told him, have taqwa of Allah. 
Imam Abu Hanifa immediately began to cry. These were hearts that wanted the admonishment. They wanted people to tell them words of sincerity to remind them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today people get offended if you give them advice. But also the problem is when we give advice, often we can only think about giving advice with harshness, with cruelty. We yell at each other. We make the other person feel like they're small. But that was not the way, this is not the way of the wa'idha. This is not the way of admonishment. Admonishment is you speak to the person heart to heart. You give them advice from your heart to their heart. You sincerely want good for them. And how often are parents doing this with their children? That you don't just tell your child, you have to pray. No, you tell your child, oh my son, this sajda that you make, it will protect you on the day of judgment. Oh my son, this sajda that you make, it will increase in your risk in this world and in the next. That you give them words that are coming from your heart to their heart. And he tells him, Ya Bunay, la tushrik billah. Inna shirk azim. Oh my son, do not make shirk with Allah. Indeed, shirk is a tremendous oppression. And this is like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said to Mu'adh, Ya Mu'adh, Atara ayya dhanbin a'zamu and Allah, O Mu'adh, you know which sin is worse in the sight of God. He said, Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, An taj'ala lillahi niddan wa huwa khalaqaq. That you make an equal with Allah or a partner with Allah even though He alone is the one who created you. And what's very powerful about this example from Luqman to his son is inna shirk la dhulmun azim. Remember that shirk, that associating and worship with Allah is a tremendous form of dhulm, of oppression. We as humans understand oppression. We understand when a person is being oppressed, when their rights are taken away, when they are imprisoned falsely, when they are attacked and harmed physically. And just like you understand oppression against mankind, then he is explaining to his son that shirk is oppression against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like we understand physical oppression, the physical act of striking someone or stealing from them or harming them physically, then shirk is a spiritual oppression. It is an oppression in your heart. It's when you're using what Allah has given you, your body, your mind, and your soul, and you're dedicating it for other than its purpose. You're dedicating it to other than its owner, than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he gives him this very beautiful piece of advice. And then he advises him with regards to the parents. We won't go into detail. We've given khutbahs in the past about the rights of parents. But we will continue after these verses. When he says, Ya Bunay, إِنَّهَا إِن تَكُوا مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِّنْ خَرْدَلٍ فَتَكُنْ فِي صَخْرَ أَوْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ أَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَأْتِ بِهَا اللَّهِ That he says, Oh my son, Indeed, if there is a sin, if there is a wrong, and it is the size of a mustard seed, a small evil, a small wrong, a small sin, and that seed was placed inside of a stone, they're very difficult to see it or to take it out. And that stone was placed inside of the earth or it was raised all the way to the heavens. He tells him, Yati bi Allah, Allah will bring it. Inna Allah latifun khabir. Indeed, Allah is subtle and He is knowledgeable. He is subtle and He is informed. And this is a very powerful piece of advice for all of us and especially to teach our children that whatever you do has consequences. And even if the sin is small and it's hidden in a rock and it's buried in the ground, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it out. And the way in which He will bring it out will be subtle. Because Allah is latif. It will be subtle. You won't realize you're being punished for the sins that you've done. You won't realize that your wealth is decreasing because of the sin that you did. You won't realize that your opportunities are being stolen because of the sin that you did. Inna Allah latifun khabir. Allah is subtle. And Allah is informed of all that you've done. So even if you can hide your sin from the people, and even if you can hide it from your teachers and your school, and even if you can hide it from the police and the state, 
إن الله لطيف خبير. Allah is لطيف. He is subtle and he is خبير. He is the one who is very well informed of all that we do. And he says, يا بني أقم الصلاة وأمر بالمعروف وانهى عن المنكر واصبر على ما أصابك. And this is a very powerful piece of advice. O oh my son, establish your salah and enjoin what is good and forbid what is evil and be patient over what will afflict you. The first thing he says, establish your prayer. You need to take care of yourself. This verse is about da'wah. It's about calling people to Islam. But you can't call anyone to Islam without taking care of yourself. And the first step of taking care of yourself is your salah. Your salah is your sila. A sila is a link. It's the link between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you need to establish your own connection with Allah. Aqim salah After you establish the salah, now you need to give da'wah. Islam is not take care of yourself only and forget about the people. No, you need to go and enjoin good and forbid evil. You need to tell, warn the people from behavior that is destructive for society. You need to warn the people and remind them of Jannah and of the hellfire. You need to give da'wah. وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفُ وَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Enjoin what is good and forbid what is evil. Now what if you do this? What if you establish your salah and you enjoin good and you forbid evil? وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكَ Be patient over what will afflict you. Not what may afflict you, what will afflict you. You will be tested. You need to be patient because you will be tested. The Prophet ﷺ, when he got the first revelation and he saw the angel, and the angel told him, Iqra, read. And he was afraid and he went home. And his wife Khadija said, let's go to my cousin, Waraqa ibn Nawfal, who was a scholar of other religions. And he was old in his age, 103 years old or 106 years old. And he died three days after this incident. They went to him. And the Prophet ﷺ described everything that he saw. And Waraqa said to him, لَيْتَنِي فِي فِيَا جَذْعَ إِذْ يُخْرِجُوكَ قَوْمَكَ He said, I wish I had some life in me. Meaning, he knows he's old, he's going to pass away soon. He said, I wish I had some life in me to be with you when your people will kick you out. The Prophet ﷺ said, قَالَ أَوَ مُخْرِجِيَهُمْ Are they going to kick me out? The Prophet cannot fathom this. The people love Muhammad ﷺ. They see him walking the streets, they say, Ya Ameen. They have a problem, they ask him to solve it. How are they going to kick me out? Are they really going to kick me out? He said to him, قَالَ مَا جَاءَ أَحَدْ بِمَا جِئْتَ بِي إِلَّا أُوذِي He said, no one has come with what you have come with. No one has come with the message, with the truth, except that they have been fought and opposed. So if you... Establish your salah and enjoin good and forbid evil. You need to be patient because you are going to be attacked. And you are going to be opposed. And you are going to be afflicted. And so be patient over those afflictions. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. The end and the conclusion of the advice of Luqman عليه السلام is as he tells his son to give دعوة to call the people to enjoin good and forbid evil is he reminds him of أدب. He reminds him of having manners. He says ولا تصاعر خدك للناس Don't turn your cheek to the people. Meaning turn away from them. That you're arrogant towards them. You roll your eyes. You turn away from them. You treat them and you belittle them and treat them like they're lower than you. ولا تمشي في الأرض مرحا Do not walk this earth with arrogance. إن الله لا يحب كل مختال فخور Indeed Allah does not love those who are arrogant or boastful. One of the worst problems is when the person gains knowledge and tries to give da'wah, but does not have any etiquette, does not have any manners. To the point that now the stereotype amongst most of the people is that if you're religious and you have a beard, and you go to the masjid, this is the person who is cruel, who is angry, who doesn't have manners. And this is unfortunately because of many people who did not bother to learn manners and tried to give da'wah. And what's imperative is for us to learn this adab. 
to realize that people will not listen to you unless you have adab. Imam Malik said, my mother would say to me, اذهب إلى ربيع وخذ منه الأدب قبل أن تأخذ منه العلم. That my mother would say to me, go to al Rabi'a, his teacher, al Rabi'a al-Ra'i, and take from him adab before you take knowledge. Because when you take knowledge without adab, that knowledge is not going to benefit people. You need to have the proper manners in dealing with people. And Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ Allah does not love those who are arrogant or boastful. Meaning, when you're arrogant and boastful and treating the people like they're less, I know more, more Qur'an than you, more hadith than you, therefore I'm better than you. And you treat them like they're less. The people will not like you and also Allah will not like you. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فخور. And then he continues and he says, وَلَا تُصَعْرُ uh, and then he continues, he says, وَقْصُدْ فِي مَشِّكْ That makes your, your walking moderate. وَقْضُدْ مِنْ صوتك, And lower your voice. إِنَّ أَنْكَرَ الْأَصْوَاتِ لَصَوْتُ الْحَمِيرِ Indeed, the worst, the most reprehensible of sounds is the braying of the donkey. I went to a masjid recently, a musalla, and in that musalla, after the prayer, immediately people started to fight. Because one person brought his child, and his child was making noise during the prayer, so they started to fight afterwards. After we calmed everyone down, they said to me, you know, in this musalla, we always have arguments. One brother wants to pray in a chair, he brings the chair to the first slough. The other brother yells at him, if you want to pray in a chair, you need to pray at the back. The tragedy, ya ikhwa, is that this is common. Every masjid and musalla has the same problems. And people yelling and arguing and raising their voices, even in the house of Allah. And this shows us how far away we are from adab. How far away we are from proper manners. That we would fight and yell and our faces will get red and we'll get angry over things that are trivial. Who cares if he has his chair in the saf or not? Things that are trivial and people will fight to this extent. But there is no future for da'wah unless we are able to attain in our hearts adab and manners. And this is a beautiful conclusion to the advice of Luqman alayhi salam. Inna Allahu wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabiyya ya ayyul ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayyidina wa nabiyyana wa habibana Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad ma dhakarahu al-dhakirun al-abrar. Wa salli alayhi rabbana ma tadawwa misku wa faah. Salli alayhi rabbana salatan wa salaman daimain ila yawm al-deen. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Wa ala ummahat al-mu'minin. Wa alayna wa ala ibad allah al-salihin. Allahumma la tada'ana fi maqamina hadha dhanban illa ghafarta. Wa la hamman illa farajta. ولا دينا إلا قضيت ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا مبتلا إلا عافيت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة هي لك رضا وننا فيها صلاح إلا قضيتها وسرتها برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وعلي بفضك كلمة الحق والدين اللهم انصر المجاهدين في سبيلك في كل مكان اللهم وحد صفوفهم واجمع كلمتهم وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم فق قيد أسران وأسر المسلمين وردهم إلى أهلهم سالمين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من, الراش من الراشدين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتايذ القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكر الله يذكركم وشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون عبد الله قيم الصلاة